Well, hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and what you see in front of me here is the Orion from Simi CNC, and this serves as my official review. Let's do it. You ready? Go. Ah, uh, welcome back. So, well, you see this here. This is from the largest machine that Simi CNC has. They're part daddy built by part daddy himself, but we're not going to worry about this. We're going to worry about this, this wonderful Delta machine. This is the Simi CNC Orion 3D printer. And this was the first Delta printer I've ever had the chance of using. Simi CNC builds Delta printers because as John, their CEO says, is he CEO? John, I don't know. He's the guy that drives the truck and pulls the trailer with this thing in it. John says they're just different and it makes sense because it feels like Simi CNC is just a bunch of really passionate guys in some warehouse just building cool stuff. And, and I'm told that's really not far from the truth. The Orion printer is now the mid-range offering from Simi CNC with the Rostock Max V2 being their top of the line and the newly announced Eris being the lower model. The Orion fits right there in the middle. This Orion here has an overall size of around 14 inches in diameter and it's about two feet tall. The maximum Printable area, because it's a delta, is a circle, and it's a 6-inch diameter circle, or 150 millimeters. It will print 9 and 1 quarter inch high at, well, 235 millimeters. It can go 100 microns in the z-axis. Its average print speed is somewhere between 30 and 60 millimeters per second, but I did push it to 100, and it seemed to survive just fine. It will Move that head around at 300 millimeters per second, which is awfully quick. The hot end will get to 245 degrees centigrade, and the bed will top out at 120 degrees centigrade. Like I said, the Delta printer, this one right here was my first, and I, I liked it. I, I found it to be interesting, and when the arms are moving around in its printing, it really my kids said, it looks like a spider, and I'm like, yeah, it looks like a spider, so it's a spider. The Orion bed is glass, and it's held in place by six binder clips, and it's, those are easily removed, and the bed is easily removed. I had purple glue stick on the bed, but it's glass, so you could put build tech, you could put ABS slurry, wolf bite, magic goo, hairspray, whatever. You could use whatever you want. It's just a standard glass bed. In the box, it said that this printer comes pre-configured to print ABS with no problems. However, in the box was a roll of PLA filament. PLA is my preferred filament, and it took that and it made all sorts of wonderful, wonderful things. If you've never seen a Delta printer, then this is all new to you, just like it was new to me. And here's how a Delta works. Three columns each have what's called on this printer a cheapskate, but a slider on it that moves up and down. And these move up and down in harmony with each other to place this effector plate, which holds the hot end, in any position around the printer. And the reason that you can hit higher printing speeds on a Delta printer is because to move it from one place to another, it's a very small movement because it's three motors working in synchronicity. Synchronicity? Yes, in synchronicity. I may have just made up a word. Everything you see before me on this table was printed on this printer, and I will go over each one. First, we'll start with the bender head. This bender head was printed in Boots PLA, and it came out really well. And what I'm not used to seeing is the missing rep-rap echoes. And that's when you, uh, you see kind of a reverberation after it takes a, a corner or a turn, and you don't see that when you're using a Delta printer. So that's kind of nice. This jet was printed hollow and in spiral mode by Simplify 3D. It turned out really well. I'm really impressed with how this worked. There were some discolorations, though, while it was printing, and I, I didn't pay attention, but I, I, I don't know what it was. It may have just burned the filament somehow. These overhangs turned out really well, and all told, 
this jet is a is a good model. What was really impressive was the point on top, and it's literally a point. These two rockets were kind of interesting because, well, I I tried two different methods. This rocket here, which is a little bit squishy, was printed using Simplify 3D's vase mode. I wanted to see what one continuous perimeter would do, and it did leave some gaps in certain places, and I realized that it needed more structure, so I printed this with three perimeters. It's still hollow, it's just got thicker walls, and it it looks amazing. This model turned out fantastic, and I'm, I'm really, really happy with, with the result. The Orion did an amazing job. The 3D Benchy, ah, uh, Benchy. It came out really, really well. I'm impressed with how this printer was able to do the bridging on the Benchy, and the top layer fill actually came out better than a lot of the printers I've ever used. I was really impressed with how this Benchy looks. Last but not least, I wanted to bring up this TARDIS, and this printer printed the TARDIS better than any printer I've ever ever used. These, th this TARDIS model has uh, these very, very thin columns where the windows are, and usually those columns get messed up. Why do the columns get messed up usually? Well, it's because the printers can't always cool them down fast enough or place the filament precise enough to make a column. It's a very, very small column, and this, this printer printed every single column with incredible accuracy and it's it's perfection it's literally perfection this is the best the windows on this TARDIS are the best windows on any TARDIS I've printed hands down the rest of the TARDIS turned out amazing but those windows are something else the printer itself is fairly easy to operate it's got a power switch right here and it's got an internal fan to cool off any of the electronics that are in the base it's got an LCD up front, it's got an SD card right here, and it's got a switch that lets you select menu items. There is a little piezo right here for the clicks, and this button resets everything and sets the printer back into a home position. So what I'm gonna do right now is show you how it prints. Right now I'm choosing to print a very thin square. It was just a test piece. The bed's gonna heat to What's the bed going to heat to? The bed's going to heat to 60 degrees centigrade, and then the nozzle will heat to 215 degrees centigrade, and at that point, the nozzle will home itself, drop down to the bed, and begin printing. The CME CNC Orion is a Delta printer, yes, but it's also a Bowden printer. What is a Bowden printer? Well, that's interesting because I, I didn't know until I got my first Bowden printer. A Bowden printer is a printer that has the filament drive motor off of the print head and an, like an ulti maker is a Bowden setup. In a Bowden setup, the drive motor is off the print head, which means that the print head weighs less. And if it weighs less, it can move faster. Just think of it this way, uh, uh, a sedan versus a loaded down concrete semi truck. Sure, why not? If they're going the same speed and they each hit their brakes, it's going to take longer for the heavier thing to stop. Using that principle, if the head weighs less, it's not going to take as long for it to stop, which means it can then go faster, and that's really interesting. This also brings me to the first uh, thing that I don't really like about this printer. The spool of filament is mounted back here, and then there are two holes in the cutout boards that you're supposed to route the filament to until you put it into the filament drive motor on this side and give it a hard 90, and I don't think that's an optimal way to do this. In fact, if I load the filament through the filament guides that it has in place, the filament binds and it makes a noise and I don't like filament that binds. So what I do is mount the filament here, just like I have, but I just let the filament kind of route itself around the back of the machine. It still has to go into this motor and be pushed up through the tube into the hot end, but but at this point, it's not binding on anything. Uh, it's just, it's an easy problem to work around. I just wish they would have done it a little differently. The other problem with this printer is an almost fatal problem, and I will tell you about that. It'll rehome itself. I'm not too worried about that, even though it's starting to print. But as it's printing, and this is, this is going around, this tube, the Bowden tube, can actually get caught between an arm and the cheapskate. And then if the printer moves up, 
Well, that arm is caught and it's happened to me many, many times. And the problem here is it then bends the effector plate. And the effector is, I think, nylon or some sort of hardened injection molded plastic, maybe, but it still bends it. And then everything has to be recalibrated when it happens. So once it starts printing, hopefully I can show you what happens to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Ooh, there it goes, look. Okay. Oh, there's a little bit of filament right there. I'm just gonna, yoink, toss that on the ground. And it's gonna start printing. So once it gets to the point where I think it's gonna reproduce this problem, I'm gonna hit the emergency stop button. I don't have to hit that button in order to get the problem to happen, but it will, it will fail hard <laughs> if it's left in that position. So right now you can see that my filament tube is actually sticking itself onto the top of this cheapskate. And well, that's just, that's not good. I'll give it one more rotation and then, and then I'll hit the button and uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it just did the, the uh, skirt, skirt, right? And now it's doing the perimeter. And I'm gonna hit the button right now. So this is a bad noise. I think this is bad. What's happening is bad. This shouldn't happen. I'll turn it off. Yeah. Oh crap, did you see what happened? So the printer just forced itself out of alignment and it made a terrible noise and oh, the world is ending. No, wait, wait, wait. So the Bowden tube just needs to be pulled out from the cheapskate. It should rehome itself. Once you're done, watch. We'll do that and then we'll do that and it's rehomed. But this is now off kilter and you'll have to put some force on it to, to bend it back. Let's see, kind of like that. Rehome it again. Oh, and I knocked over my jet. Okay, I turned it off for now. But this leads me to my final thoughts. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I like, I'm gonna tell you what I don't like, and then I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. How about that? Here's, here's what I like. This printer, it does an amazing job. The, the, the 0.5 millimeter nozzle on this thing spits out just precise filament and it makes wonderful models. Even, even the jet that fell down, I can put it back up and it looks good. And look at that, Benchy still looks good. The models it made are wonderful. It can print any G code you can throw at it. You can use Cura, you can use Simplify 3D, you can use Matter Control, you can use Craftware. You could write your own G code interpreter, parser and and, and send it to this printer and it would work. It would just work. The printer does a wonderful job. It's built in a great place by good people who make quality things. I, I like this printer. Now I need to tell you what I don't like about this printer and there are two things. The first thing being this, the filament drive motor on the side. I don't think the path of the filament is, is good and I don't think the motor is positioned well and it's just not, it's not optimal. Yes, I know the people that built this printer know far, far more than I do about printers, but I know my experience, and my experience says that there is a better way to route the filament. The second thing that I don't like is that horrible noise that it made when the Bowden tube got caught between the arm and the cheapskate, and that sucks. Oh, that sucks. And here's why I say it's near fatal. It is not a fatal problem because CME CNC has wonderful support. In fact, when I showed this printer off in a previous video, JJ over at CME CNC saw the video, sent me an email saying, hey Joel, I saw your video. I'm gonna send you some new parts. They should be in the mail in a couple days. And they did, they arrived, I put them on, everything was honky dory. So even though I'm, this is a problem, that Bowden tube getting caught in the cheapskate is definitely a problem. It's not a fatal issue because I'm working with support and it's going to be fixed. Oh man, my final thoughts, all right. I like this printer. I like this printer a lot. Full disclosure, this printer was sent to me for review and CME CNC is allowing me to keep it. That said, I would have paid for this printer 
with my own money. I think that this printer does a fantastic job. I think that it's very easy to use. It heats up quickly and it makes great models. If this is the kind of printer you think you want, I've put some links down in the description that takes you to places that sell this printer. And if you buy this printer using those links, it helps out my channel. All right, well, that's it. That's it. This is the Simi CNC Orion printer. These are the models it printed. These are my thumbs going up because I like it a lot. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. You should subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And that over there is Patreon. And you can throw me a dollar a month if you want to financially support the channel, but I'll never require it. And all I'm ever going to really ask of you is for a social high five. And speaking of high fives, as always, high five. Is Joel Telly and he's printing 3D like some Pokemon a gun from Destiny and when you call him a nerd and stand up proudly cause he's packing some heat from his YouTube family he can review printers till he falls to the floor then he'll give them away like Oprah in 04 there's the Wombat, Volsbot, GMAX XT then a break for Red Bull and Lobo's Taco Crispy printed koozie in his hand for his drink he sets up his GoPro and prints out a bender bang so send him a dollar to put in his head or a self-addressed Envelope for a sticker instead. There's a nerd vlog on boxings and Q's and A's, and he'll open your mail every single Friday. And of course, you can't forget that pancake bot and filament sonically's and Joel's cute little sign. And they printed this printer at Holodex Studio, like Lando Calrissian from his dried Han Solo. So show your support on Patreon or subscribe, and as always, high five.